Graceful flock of swans beat you over the head with picturesque symbolism. Nicholas Sparks. What? I guess this dude didn't get his medication for the day. I'm really gonna miss that guy. After the promise of young romance in the trailer, movie spends the first several minutes hitting you over the head with old people. All right, now, where did we leave off? Cruel husband asks wife with dementia where they left off during pointless love story. Also, movie rips off the old person is reading this entire story to someone else gimmick from The Princess Bride. Do you mind? Ferris wheel guy breaks the rules by stopping the ride when Noah is at the top to scold him for breaking the rules. Damn, my head slipping. The crowd's on fire, you idiot! Oh, she didn't hear that. Please don't do that. Well, this couldn't possibly make the situation more dangerous. After this, Noah somehow got down from the Ferris wheel unharmed, Noah and Allie parted ways without exchanging phone numbers, and there was no further discussion whatsoever. You remember me? Yeah, sure. Mr. Underwear, was it? Yes, the most memorable thing about Noah hanging from that Ferris wheel and practically threatening suicide was the exposed underwear moment. I was being drawn to you. What a line. You use that on all the girls? The preceding dialogue was brought to you by Cliché. When you need a line, make it a cliche. Earlier, James Garner said the carnival was June 6th, 1940, and we learned that Allie was only there for the summer, but when Noah finally gets his date, it's to see Lil Abner, which didn't come out until November 1st, 1940. After you. Gee, she made him sit on the other side of the couple? I wasn't alive in 1940, but this strikes me as the very definition of playing hard to get. The town was bustling with activity, but respectfully cleared the f out for Allie and Noah's post-movie walk. Radcliffe, Sarah Lawrence, those are the ones we want. Allie expertly plays the pronoun game so that Noah has to ask what we means. Who's we? What? Ah, <laughs> well played! Man, she is brilliant at this game. My dad and I used to come out here and lay down and watch the lights change. Oh, come on. I mean, even in the 1930s and 40s, this had to be one of the most pointless things to do with your time. Go from green to red to yellow. Um, if they went from green to red to yellow, you were watching Broken Lights. When Noah first lays down, he's on the center line, but then when Allie lays down with him, at first they're all the way over solidly in one lane. Then in a subsequent shot, they're back over in the other lane, basically. How the f*** did this car almost hit them if they're lying on the other lane? Was he English? Also, the guy in the car has every right to be mad, but was he really not going to stop for any reason? Or even swerve to miss them? Oh, that was a lovely poem. What was it? Rich girl who has millions of tutors and looking to attend Ratcliffe or Sarah Lawrence doesn't recognize Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Also, she could hear Noah reading the poem in a low mumble, but not hear his dad say, not bad for Whitman? Not bad for Whitman. I'm a Tennyson man myself, and he likes Whitman. Well, this sounds like an epic rap battle in the making. Now say you're a bird, too. If you're a bird, I'm a bird. And this is me giving you the bird. Everything about this poor people hoedown is completely authentic. Especially the part about how their clothes are f***ing spotless. Poor people always dress to the nines for a hoedown. I was friendly with that boy down there. Juliet's dad waits until 30 dates have gone by before bothering to notice there's a Romeo in his daughter's life. Okay, a scene does not contain a lap dance. There, I said it. Yeah, let's go to the haunted house to have sex. I think going back to the traffic lights to have sex would have been safer. This is a good way to drain your battery and get stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Well, I'm gonna buy it one day, I'm gonna fix it up. Oh, this must be the It's a Wonderful Life section of the ripoff fest. Is this really the first time they're gonna have sex? Damn, they waited like the whole summer to do this? Dude, I mean seriously, dude, I know it's an emergency, but you couldn't knock first? His parents are going crazy. They got every cop in town out looking for her. How long were they taking off their clothes? They only left on their date a little bit ago, drove to this house, chatted, and then started disrobing. Did her parents wait a whole 15 minutes before calling the cops? He wrote one letter a day for a year. And every single time, Allie's mom beat her to the mailbox. You'd think a girl like Allie would have been desperate to check the mail every day, for at least a month, and would have been suspicious if her mother said not to go near the mailbox for any reason. He and Finn packed their bags and headed for Atlanta. Oh, so now you're ready to go to the big city. Go to New York with your hot girlfriend, no. But go to Atlanta with your BFF, sure. Man, this two-minute montage scene perfectly encapsulates what it must have been like to be in the war. Why the hell did I bother watching all those Band of Brothers episodes? Did she just wake him up, sit him up, pretend to think about maybe giving him a sip of water, and then lay him back down on the bed? I guess that's why she's a volunteer nurse. Stalking. She agreed with all her heart, but couldn't understand why at the very moment she said yes, Noah's face came to her mind. Because no one falls in love with James Marsden in movies and gets away with it. Noah took a look at the house, but only saw one thing. Allie. Because no one falls in love with a house in movies and get- oh, f it. Fate stepped in and dealt him a sweet card. Well, either fate or the screenwriter. Allie just happens to be in the exact place where Noah started to give up looking for. Also, is it just me or is fate getting lazy here? 
I mean, Noah almost missed her completely. Shall not want. When Noah's father died... Wait, did Duke skip a whole chapter where Noah's father got some sort of disease or something? I mean, the dude didn't die of old age, that's for sure. Jeez, dude, just take the house off the market. Also, did Noah tell this couple to negotiate the price of the house next to his truck so that he could pull a shotgun on them just in case they offered too much money? But the woman knows when a man looks into her eyes and sees someone else. Um, based on my experience, no, she doesn't. Wedding porn. This newspaper took several days, possibly weeks, to run this story. Hasn't Noah been trying to sell this house for a while? Or did all those people who came by his house come on one day? Also, what kind of newspaper puts society news, house restorations, models paying traffic fines, and a Frenchman wins prize story all on the same page? Also, there's a ton of news about Spiro Agnew and Barry Goldwater in this newspaper, even though their political careers started well after this time period. This is a good way to destroy a veil. Take care of a few things. I need to clear my head. Pretty amazing that Lon doesn't realize this is code for I'm going to bang my old boyfriend before I marry you. Car conveniently doesn't start after hitting a wooden fence so that Allie can officially cheat on Lon. This is a good story. Movie pimps its own story. I think I've heard it before. Yeah, we all have. It just has different actors in it. James Garner's arms go from uncrossed to crossed in these subsequent shots. Is this where... Yep, this is the room where you talk too much while you were naked and nobody got laid. By the way, how'd your father die? No one seems to know. Right. What about how her car was wrecked on the fence? Come home. Mama doesn't know us. Wait a minute, you mean Noah and Allie got back together? You ruined it for me! All this time I thought she was gonna end up with Lon. Well, sh I don't need to watch this movie anymore, do I? Anything you want to tell me? No. No? No. Is he a fiancé or a doormat? Did he already fix that f***ing fence? This scene would be a lot more believable if it had more geese and swans. Honestly, why did the director stop at this number? It completely kills my suspension of disbelief. I mean, shit, I can still see sections of water! We had to cut a sin here about a pearl necklace. No sin on the counter for this scene. We just wanted to take a moment and tell you that we do have limits. Kind of. <laughs> Noah's shirt went through the Ryan Gosling effect, where it just disappears from one room to the next. Allie's thinking right about now, why didn't I have sex with more poor people? Where the hell is Allie's car? We saw her leave it right where the red car is currently sitting back when she arrived yesterday. And then they went out on the boat, got caught in the rain, and ran straight inside to do it. So when did anyone move Allie's car? Was it the same farmland Oopa Loopa fairies that fixed the fence? It was a magic fence. Wait just a second. They woke up from f***ing all night long, talked about eating breakfast, heard a knock at the door, invited the booty call girl in to eat with them, and now it's nighttime? Did she f***ing stay all damn day in that house? How many meals did they cook for her? Reading. Also, there's no way this is a guy's handwriting. Especially a rugged craftsman and former woodmill worker like Noah, who basically rebuilt an entire house by himself. He does not have penmanship this good. Also, it's nothing like the penmanship he showed on the letters he was sending to Allie. I didn't want to wake you, but I'd risk waking you by painstakingly sticking these arrows onto the floor. Also, did he glue these arrows onto the rug in the next room? None of these things flap up when she runs past them, so they're either stuck there or they're painted there. And man, that rug really tied the room together. Mother, who has been dead set against her daughter dating an unsuitable poor guy, also dated an unsuitable poor guy when she was young and now she's okay with it, cliche. Discount long distance Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Allie's mom is a hoarder. I mean, she kept these letters for seven years, even after Allie got engaged to Lon, and for what? What are you gonna do, Al? I don't know. You don't know? You don't no, you just spent several days in a row sleeping with this guy and living with him and you're still not sure what your heart wants? You have two incredible men to choose from. Choose, damn it. And at least let one of them be free to go snag some other girl before they're gone. Damn. Selfish much? I'm not bitter anymore because I know that what we had was real. So if it wasn't real, you'd be bitter? Oh, damn. Sorry, Martha. You were this close to getting him back. James Garner's cry face. This light switch in this very dark room is turned to the on position. They're dead? Well, that really tied up the character arcs there, didn't it? I think the deaths are totally necessary to the story and not just some slapped-on emotional tactic by a director desperate to make you cry. So, can I ask a question? Was there a notebook anywhere in this story? I mean, sure, he's reading a handwritten story to her, but no one ever mentions a notebook. No one refers to this storybook as the notebook. We don't even get to see her write the story in the notebook as a younger girl. I can't see a single reason to call this movie The Notebook. That's how not important The Notebook was to the actual story. They could just as easily have called this movie The Old House, or Lots of f***ing Swans, or The Fence That Repaired Itself. All those things had more symbolic impact on the story than The f***ing Notebook did.
Now say you're a bird too. If you're a bird, I'm a bird. Here you go. Make me a bird so I can fly far, far, far away from here. I'm like a bird. I only fly away. A bird. So what do you do now? I work my way from place to place. You know, tramp steamers and such. Well, that's lovely, dear. Hmm. Don't mind my asking that. How much do you make at your job? Got air in my lungs and a few blank sheets of paper. Just the other night, I was sleeping under a bridge, and now here I am on the grandest ship in the world having champagne with you fine people. <laughs> I'll take some of that. Is a veil too much? Are you kidding? You look perfect! You know what's better than watching a movie about someone reading a story to someone? Nothing! Listening to someone read it. T -t -t today Junior! And now, because of the immense 150,000 title library found at audible.com slash cinemasins, you can actually get The Notebook on audiobook. There's a version narrated by Barry Bostwick. Do you know who that is? That's the mayor from Spin City. Hey there, citizens. Ooh. <laughs> hey there, citizens. There's a version with Kate Nelligan, who I don't know, and Campbell Scott. That's the dude from Single. I was just, uh... Nowhere near your neighborhood. If you look hard enough, you might even find an audio copy of The Fence That Repaired Itself. This Valentine's Day, gift your sweetheart or drown your single sorrows with a good book about love. I love you. Right now, if you head to audible.com slash cinemasins and sign up for a trial membership, you can get your first book for free. So what are you waiting for? Get your Audible audiobook today and leave the reading to the professionals. Sure. 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 S